once we've determined those the answers to those questions from the previous video of um, specificity, sensitivity, um, does our method uh, do those things that are required for the objectives that we need it for, uh, a final step that we you need to take with analytical measurements is ensuring that the results we get are accurate. Um, you know, precision uh, tells us how reproducible something is. You also would like to have that, but you want to know that your results are giving you the correct answer. Uh, so how can you do this? Um, there are a couple of things that can be built into your method. Uh, one is something that's called spike recovery. Um, and this is a quick and easy way to double check that you're, you're getting something that is accurate, that, that truly measures the concentration of the analyte you're trying to measure. Uh, so a spike is where you add a small amount of, of your analyte at high concentration to, to your sample. Um, and you know the concentration of the analyte that you're adding. So, so you're, you're adding a known amount of your analyte. And there's some analyte that's already present, of course, as well. And so you still have all the other things that are present. You know, if this is, say, a food sample, the other stuff that got dissolved is also present. If it's, say, a sample from a nasal swab, all the other junk in there <laughs> right, in your nose is, is present as well in this sample. Uh, and so a spike recovery is you add this known amount of, uh, to your um, sample and then measure the sample. So you measure the before and after the spike. And the difference in signal should match the amount of analyte you added. So you can determine how much you added to it um, and make sure that matches what you know that you added to it. Um, this is often written in terms of, say, a percentage. Um, and so your ideal here is that you get a 100% spike recovery. So meaning that you add, you know, five micrograms of, a, of a, your analyte to your sample, you measure it and you determine that, that there was five micrograms added, you know, with, with the technique that you're using to do measurements. So um, your ideal is 100%. Uh, you very rarely get, you know, 100% on the dot, uh, right? There's always some uncertainty to it, but that's what you're aiming for. And if you get something that's very different from 100%, either high or low, um, that's an indication that your results are not accurate and that the concentrations you're determining for your samples without the spikes are, are not going well. Uh, another way to ensure accuracy um, is what are known as blind samples. Uh, and so these are samples of known concentration. So these are standard samples. And when we, we talk about standards in analytical chemistry, we mean a standard is something with known concentration. No concentration or amount, you know, depending on what context is, we're talking about. So there's a standard sample, but the person doing the analysis doesn't know the final answer. And so the idea is that they do the measurement. They do everything like they normally would, um, you know, for an unknown sample, and then they report that value. Uh, somebody else who is not doing the analysis knows what that actual amount is and basically double checks. So, you know, do those agree to within statistical uncertainty? We can use the same sort of tests that we talked about in the previous chapter, t-tests, you know, statistical tests, to be able to do this comparison. And that can give you a sense of whether your results are accurate or whether there is something that needs to be addressed, some sort of systematic error. Now, one final thought on this is, um, you know, as you're preparing your analysis, one other thing to be thinking about that will help to ensure, or, or ideally helps to ensure accuracy, is coming up with a set of what are known as standard operating procedures. 
So this is a written document that tells people doing the analysis what are the step-by-step -step instructions. You know, um, how do you handle samples? What are the things that you absolutely have to do? Uh, what are the order that you add different reagents to your sample? Um, you know, what are the, the concentration ranges that are acceptable? You know, these are, these are the questions that need to be addressed and made clear to, to everybody doing the analysis. Uh, you could think of this as maybe the procedures written out in like a lab notebook. Um, though in, you know, in industrial setting, this, you know, would be, you know, much more specific and, and very, very, ideally, very clear to the, to the analyst what exactly they need to do. Okay. And so, and then once we have established, you know, that we're getting accurate results, answered the questions, come up with our standard operating procedures. Um, if this is an, anal an analysis that's occurring many times, you know, maybe this is a quality assurance operation, you know, something that, like the food industry or whatever, um, you need to assess it over time. So, you know, continually be taking uh, spike, you know, spike, doing spike recovery measurements, making sure that over time that stays, you know, consistently at 100% spike recovery. Um, you know, make sure that you're not getting um, changes in, you know, if assess results over time, you know, do spike recovery, measure standard samples, and make sure that your results continue to hold up, even as maybe pieces of equipment age, uh, or, you know, different people now are doing the analysis that are running the instruments or running the, you know, the, the procedure that you're still getting accurate results. So this is something that needs to be tracked over time.